Wow. <laughs> what an amazing honor to be selected to be the recipient of Antioch University Santa Barbara's Award for Excellence in Teaching. I am delighted and quite moved. I'd like to express my gratitude to our president, Dr. Nancy Leppard, and the committee for choosing to bestow this great honor on me and the students. And I would like to offer a special thanks to Dr. Barbara Lipinski for her continuous acknowledgement of me in general and for nominating me for this award. Needless to say, I was quite surprised and tickled when Nancy Leppard came into my office and told me the good news. I humbly sat down at my desk afterwards and in a little bit of a shock and um, mixed with soft feelings in my heart, deeply appreciating that I was being appreciated. Well, my warm fuzziness quickly moved to terror when I realized that I would probably be expected to accept the award at the graduation ceremony in front of hundreds of people and that I'd actually have to come up with something to say. I never considered that I would be bestowed with such an honor, let alone work as a core faculty member in higher learning in the very institution that changed my life. You see, I completed my bachelor's degree at Antioch University, Los Angeles, after returning to school in my 30s, when I decided to go into the field of psychology. My mentors at Antioch awakened me to feminist, and existential principles, to cognitive and moral development, as well as multicultural and ecological awareness, mindfulness meditation, as well as deep, creative, and philosophical inquiry. In addition to extending credit to the work I had already done in the world, in the model of honoring prior learning experiences, I began to develop my voice in the embrace of this most extraordinary institution. And there was a time in my life when I wasn't sure that I would even be able to complete a doctoral education, or a, excuse me, a college education at that. But due to stressors in financial and interpersonal realms, as well as my commitment to the caretaking of others in my family. In looking for ways to describe what my life was like until I had my first experience with Antioch, I found the following parable, and uh, it's called The Obstacle in Our Path. It goes like this. In ancient times, a king had a boulder placed on a roadway. Then he hid himself and watched to see if anyone would remove the huge rock. Some of the king's wealthiest merchants and courtiers came by and simply walked around it. Many loudly blamed the king for not keeping the roads clear, but none did anything about getting the stone out of the way. Then a peasant came along, carrying a load of vegetables. Upon approaching the boulder, the peasant laid down his burden and tried to move the stone to the side of the road. After much pushing and straining, he finally succeeded. After the peasant picked up his load of vegetables, he noticed a purse lying in the road where the boulder had been. The purse contained many gold coins and a note from the king, indicating that the gold was for the person who removed the boulder from the roadway. The peasant learned what many of us never understand, Every obstacle presents an opportunity to improve our condition. Antioch holds true to its learner-centered and empowerment model by encouraging active agency and the development of the critical thinking skills necessary to build a meaningful life and career based on core humanistic values. These values were passed down to me from my mentors, and it gives me great joy to pay it forward, as it were. Many graduates of Antioch have had lots of obstacles and hardships along the way, along their life path. And the mission of Antioch to advance social, economic, and environmental justice 
and social good provides an opportunity to recognize these difficult experiences as opportunities that add rather than take away from a purposeful life. Antioch is an institution with socially conscious values of the highest order. And the mentors, colleagues, and students that I have the good fortune of working with, we share a vision, don't we? We share a vision for a world where multicultural awareness, equality, we versus us versus against them, ecological awareness, contextual understanding, experiential learning and reflection are key ingredients. We're like a close family here at Antioch, and there are many dedicated and distinguished faculty sitting in this room right now who, in my estimation, work just as hard as I do as we focus on the core areas of student learning, scholarship, service, and institutional citizenship. So, I, I feel a bit shy in, in this moment to accept this, but, but I suppose one way of looking at it is that I have the honor of standing up here and speaking for many of us when I quote from Linda McMillan's words regarding a holistic model for faculty, in that in our work we are not just looking at, quote, attention to quality teaching or the individual teacher, but a focus on teaching within the greater context of values espoused and demonstrated in the institution. The tension of becoming means dedicating ourselves, our institutions, and our students to constant introspection and reevaluation. This heightened awareness energizes us and enables us to reach the emotional highs we feel when we can encourage ourselves and others to do our best. We, like our students, remain works in progress, living in the present but ever mindful of our futures. The challenge then for all of us is not to squelch the healthy tension, but to constantly use it to work toward the understanding, connecting, advocating, legitimizing, integrating, communicating that defines our humanity and which is at the core of our faculty lives." Unquote. Being a faculty member asks much of us. As Parker Palmer said, the courage to teach is the courage to keep one's heart open in those very moments when the heart is asked to hold more than it is able. So that teacher and students and subjects can be woven into the fabric of community that learning and living require. I like to advocate for walking in the personal and professional world with what Buddhists refer to as beginner's mind, and to do so with an open heart. In terms of my teaching philosophy, I so often recognize that although there may be inherent power differentials in the teacher-student roles, we have much to learn from those we mentor. Socrates was known to say, let us look at it together, my dear fellow, and if you can challenge any of my arguments, do so and I will listen to you. And this exemplifies my own intention to always treat others, students and others, with respect and with an appreciation of their inherent dignity and potential for self-actualization. Dr. Lipinski, the chair of our PsyD program, gave a great gift of the opportunity to teach an elective course this past term in which I was able to lead the use of psychotherapy and also self-care with imagination and spirituality. In many ways, I've reflected on this. The students in all of our programs, all of our programs, they're the caregivers of the community. Most nonprofit organizations and other organizations that you'll see in the tri-county communities are stewarded by Antioch students and graduates. I'm sure you would recognize that. Students not only have to do their coursework, but they go out into the surrounding communities, often working under conditions of extreme stress. There's often little time for self-care 
as our students go through the process of completing their degree programs and witnessing them making their way through the trajectory of all of these tasks is often heart-wrenching. For us faculty then to try to model um, and own this for ourselves, the intention of self-care, it's quite meaningful. And as I get to know the students on campus, whether it be in the program I'm most familiar with you, as I do, or others, as I meet you on campus, many of you from different programs, and I'm always struck by the presence, the honesty, curiosity, passion, and wisdom of you individuals. Uh, for instance, I recently took my class to a beautiful sanctuary. We sometimes, our faculty, we, we create rituals for our last day of a course sometimes. And I recently had the uh, good fortune of taking our class to a beautiful sanctuary in the natural environment accompanied by a chuma shelter from the community and a dream tender. And we really appreciated this half day of sanctuary. I needed it too. <laughs> And in our Antioch stance, we silently look at one another, we bow to the immeasurables that bind us in all of our diversity and in all of our sameness as we commit ourselves to making this world a better place. I wouldn't be able to do all that I do without the patience and support of my loved ones and my husband, James, who's always been so supportive of me putting in as much time that I need to or choose to with my work, so I owe him a big thanks as well. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> In my gratitude to all of you, to all of those who, who made this possible for me today to receive this honor, to show you how I'm feeling right now, I will end with an Osaji Indian prayer. <coughs> Footprints I made. I go to the field with eager haste. Footprints I make. Amid rustling leaves I stand. Footprints I make. Amid yellow blossoms I stand. Footprints I make. I stand with exultant pride. Footprints I make. I hasten homeward with a burden of gladness. Footprints I make. There's joy and gladness in my heart. Footprints I make. I stand amidst a day of contentment. Thank you very, very much.